This is Dimitri Lascaris reporting for the Real News Network from Montreal, Canada. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau recently concluded a cross-country tour consisting of a series of town halls. As Prime Minister Trudeau headed westward, Canadians' questions about his government's climate policies became increasingly hostile. One subject that generated considerable critical commentary was the Trudeau government's decision to allow the massive expansion of Kinder Morgan's Trans Mountain tar, sand, tar Sands Pipeline, which runs from the north of Alberta to Vancouver on Canada's west coast. Shortly after it came to power, the Trudeau government signed on to the Paris Climate Accord with much fanfare. But as NASA scientist James Hansen has written, the continued exploitation of Canada's tar sands will mean game over for the climate. Many therefore question whether the Trudeau government's approval of the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion can be reconciled with its stated commitment to the Paris Climate Accord. In one of Prime Minister Trudeau's recent town halls, a town hall held in Winnipeg, Manitoba, the Prime Minister was directly challenged on the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion by Clayton Thomas Mueller of 350.org. Let's watch part of their exchange. So, 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 sorry, sir. No, no, you're right. Okay. I will come back to you and we will let this, this fellow get his question. Yep. No, I thank, thank you, question. The question is about the Kinder Morgan pipeline uh, and the recent. Uh, so, yeah, bring, bring him the mic. You could have said please when you asked for the mic, though. Thank you. Thank you. Damn, you're good. I got to say that. My question is wrote, Dan C. Prime Minister Trudeau, and welcome to our great city of Winnipeg. My name is Clayton Thomas Mueller, and I'm a Cree man from Pugatawagan Cree Nation. I want you to know that I support yesterday's announcement by the BC government to place a new moratorium on tar sand shipments to the West Coast, like, for example, the Kinder Morgan Pipeline. I support it because I believe in climate action, in clean water, and in respecting indigenous rights. You said yourself, only communities grant permission for massive pipelines. Now it's time for you to live up to your word. We already know that First Nations municipalities and people all across BC do not consent to Kinder Morgan. Now the BC government has made its position clear as well by blocking new tar sand shipments. Will you support the actions of First Nations, the BC government, and their citizens, or will you stand behind big oil and tear our country apart by going against the BC government on the Kinder Morgan pipeline? Okay. Um, provinces often have disagreements over policy and over programs, and that's uh, something that we've regularly seen uh, across the country on different issues and on big issues. My job at the federal level is to always stand up for the interests of all Canadians. And that's why we put in place a process understanding that you can't make a choice between what's good for the environment and what's good for the economy. Today we are joined by Clayton Thomas Mueller himself to discuss this exchange and the intensifying battle over Kinder Morgan's Trans Mountain Pipeline. Clayton is a member of the Treaty 6 based Matthias Colomb Cree Nation, also known as Pukatawagan, located in northern Manitoba, Canada. And based in Winnipeg, Clayton is the Stop It at the Source campaigner with 350.org. He joins us today from Winnipeg. Thanks very much for coming back on The Real News, Clayton. It's awesome to be here. Hello, Dimitri, and hello to the viewers. So, Clayton, uh, as, we've as we've just seen in answer to your question at the Winnipeg Town Hall, the Prime Minister clearly implied that the expansion of the Trans Mountain Pipeline is in the national interest of Canadians. How do you respond to that argument? You know, I think that Prime Minister Trudeau and the Trudeau administration, you know, made a, a calculated gamble. You know, they bet that they could early on in their administration, um, you know, after record numbers of voters showing up to elect them, them in voters mostly represented by millennials uh, new voters from the First Nations base inspired by the rhetoric on the campaign trail that he would bring Canada back when it comes to climate action and that he would ratify the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and respect communities rights to say no in relation 
relation to Kinder Morgan, he made big promises that he would attach a climate test to the NEB process, the National Energy Board process, um, of which all of which he went against. You know, when he returned home after declaring at the Paris Climate Summit a couple of years back that Canada was back, months later he approved two massive tar sands pipeline, the Enbridge Line 3, and of course the Kinder Morgan pipeline, thinking that they would have enough time to win back the hearts and minds of voters in British Columbia. Well, that's just not the case. And BC has demonstrated uh, that not just cities like Vancouver, Nanaimo, or Burnaby, uh, you know, dozens of First Nations, and of course the BC government have all come out against the Kinder Morgan pipeline and the sevenfold tanker increase of tanker traffic coming into the city of Vancouver's Burrard Inlet. Um, you know, this of course has resulted in a trade war dispute between the province of Alberta and the province of BC. But what it really highlights is an emerging constitutional that the Trudeau administration has to deal with a year before the next federal election. Before we go, I want to explore all of that with you, but I just want to start with uh, something you mentioned in your commentary, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. The Trudeau government has trumpeted its, its purported commitment to that declaration, but can that stated commitment be squared with its support for the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion? And if not, why not? Well, absolutely not. You know, and I think that that's a great example of the double speak that the you know Prime Minister of Canada has been utilizing in the media, both domestically and internationally. You know, they show up internationally as the champion of Indigenous rights, but meanwhile, back home, our own Justice Minister, the first Indigenous Justice Minister, Jody Wilson Rebeck, uh, has called the declaration a political distraction and untenable under Canadian law. Just yesterday, uh, Minister Saganash of the official opposition, the NDP party, uh, had his bill passed, which calls for the immediate implementation of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And so, you know, the Trudeau government finds itself in a place where, you know, the double speak that it's been utilizing, whether it's on Indigenous rights, on the protection of water resources, or on energy policy, like, for example, their support of the Kinder Morgan pipeline, uh, it really highlights the contradictions. And so they're in the hot seat right now. And, you know, I think First Nations in BC, most notably the Tsleil-Waututh Nation, along with other coastal Salish communities in the Burrard Inlet and in the interior, like Diskokwakmok Nation, who are standing in opposition against this pipeline, these communities, you know, believe Justin Trudeau when he said that communities grant permission, not governments, and they're holding Justin Trudeau to account by calling for a mass demonstration in the city of Vancouver on March 10th, uh, where people can learn about it at protecttheinlet.ca. Let's talk about that trade war you mentioned. I understand uh, that the, you, in fact, uh, indicated that the BC government has imposed uh, a, a moratorium on new tar sand shipments. And Rachel Notley's government, uh, an NDP government in Alberta, just like uh, that of John Horgan in, in, in British Columbia, an NDP government, it has responded with a threat of legal action. And this week, remarkably, Rachel Notley's government announced what amounted to a boycott of British Columbia wines in apparent retaliation for the BC government's actions in regard to Trans Mountain. Now, uh, Rachel Notley's government nonetheless claims to be serious about addressing the climate crisis do you think that the reaction of the Rachel Notley government to uh, the moratorium on uh, shipments to BC uh, can be reconciled with its stated commitment to resolve the climate crisis? Look, you know, the, the invisible hand of big oil and its never ending infinite resources and the revolving door between big oil and the Notley government and the Trudeau government at the federal level um, are undeniable. You know, this spat between BC and the Alberta government over the Kinder Morgan pipeline and over this announcement uh, for a moratorium on new tar sands exports from our Pacific coast, you know, the BC government is well within its rights to, you know, consult with its citizens over the impacts of a bitumen spill on the Pacific coast, um, you know, and, and I think that this reaction by the Notley government, especially the ban on the sales of BC wines within the, the jurisdiction of Alberta, um, you know, are a bit over the top. You know, I think there is some saber rattling that's happening here. 
um, you know, by Rachel Nodley in response to Horgan. and she tried to spin doctor the collapse of the electricity sales talks of the controversial Site C dam to the province of Alberta, saying that it was, you know, the collapse of those talks was a result of this decision for the moratorium on bitumen exports. But those talks collapsed before Horgan's government made made that announcement. And so Notley is grasping at straws and Justin Trudeau and his administration at the federal level are trying to, you know, frame this as an interprovincial dispute to try and get away from the reality that they are facing a constitutional crisis with their ongoing support and opposition to the government of BC and their citizens and first First Nations opposing Kinder Morgan. So it's a very complicated situation, but make no mistake, uh, 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 BC has made their position very clear that they're not going to get bullied by the NDP Alberta government or the federal government of Canada. Well, we've been talking to Clayton Thomas Mueller of 350.org about the intensifying battle over the Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion. Thank you very much for joining us uh, again on The Real News, Clayton. Thank you so much for having me. And this is Dimitri Lascaris reporting from Montreal for the Real News Network.